recently, a lot of players have been celebrated for their longevity in the NHL. A year ago, Patrick Marlowe would break Gordie Howe's all-time games played record, and just several months ago, Keith Yandel would break the coveted Ironman streak, playing the most consecutive games by an NHL player in league history. Un Till Philly decided to bench him and break said streak, but we won't go over all that. While everyone else was focused on celebrating those players' careers, I was looking for the NHL player who played the least amount of games, the NHLer who had the shortest career ever. And at first, I thought I had my guy, as immediately one name popped up almost everywhere I looked, Randy Exelby. So, you know, I hope there maybe is a future for me in uh, the Canadian organization. You know, I understand that they have, you know, probably the best goaltending tandem in the league, but, uh, you know, I'm just trying to be patient and just improve in the American League. Randy Exelby would get selected in the 1986 supplemental draft by Montreal, but at the time, the Canadians' goaltending depth chart was absolutely insane, with goaltender Patrick Waugh starting between the pipes and Brian Hayward backing him up. So, Exelby, unsurprisingly, struggled to receive any ice time, but he continued to stick around, actively contributing in practice, waiting and hoping for his shot to arrive. And in a game during the 89-90 season, Exelby would get his chance, playing in net for an entire three minutes before returning to the bench never to play again. At least, that's how most articles make it out to be. The reason why Exelby even got a shot in the first place wasn't because Waugh suffered from an injury or even an equipment malfunction, but because Patrick Waugh had to use the bathroom. This story seemed too funny not to talk about. I thought I had everything all set and ready to go until I realized that Exelby later in his career would play an entire 60-minute game for the Edmonton Oilers, meaning that he didn't have the shortest career in NHL history. Stumped, I decided to continue looking, and on an online hockey forum, I managed to find him. Bruins netminder Jordan Sigalette had the shortest NHL career that I could possibly find, with his career lasting a grand total of 43 seconds. But when researching Jordan's story, it turns out that he backed and overcame extreme adversity to play those 43 seconds. Sigalette would play collegiate hockey for Bowling Green University, and although not being a standout superstar, Sigalette was a reliable goaltender for some not-so-good Falcons teams, with the only noticeable player being defenseman Kevin Bieksa, which can also explain Jordan's poor win-loss record as well. But despite the losing, he still posted some extremely solid numbers, recording a 909 save percentage as a freshman and a 9-10 save percentage in his second season. Jordan's junior year, however, would be when things took an unexpected turn, as he would receive shocking news being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Sigalette would officially tell the public during December of that year, and numerous players were instantly inspired by Sigalette, and the entire college hockey world would also rally around him. Teams would send out sign items to Jordan, with the entire Nebraska-Omaha team signing a jersey, and Boston College and Michigan sending in items as well. Jordan was so beloved by both his teammates and his coaches that once making his return, the team would make him the first goalie in Bowling Green history to wear the C on his chest, naming him the team captain during the 04-05 season. Multiple sclerosis can be best defined as, quote, a disease in which the immune system eats away at the protective covering of nerves, disrupting communication between the brain and the body. Sigalette would take part in multiple interviews after a story became more well-known, and one of the most heartbreaking things mentioned was hearing Jordan's explanation for not wanting to initially tell anyone about his diagnosis. First, I thought it was just going to be a completely negative effect on my career and just everything overall. I was That's why I didn't go public at first. I was worried I wasn't going to be signed because of this burden on me. Thankfully, Jordan was drafted a few years prior by the Boston Bruins during the seventh round of the 2001 draft, and had an incredible end to his college career. As what's making his return, he would play lights out, being named a finalist for the Hobie Baker Award. Sigalet would get his chance to continue to develop in the AHL, working his way up the depth chart, playing in 37 games with the Providence Bruins during the 05-06 season. Eventually, he would get called up 
to potentially live out his dream of playing in the NHL. In a game against the Tampa Bay Lightning on January 7th, Andrew Raycroft would sprain his ankle late in the third period, causing him to leave the ice. And with 43 seconds left, Jordan Sigalette would get put in. Recording a perfect 1,000 save percentage and zero goals against average, making NHL history. After those 43 seconds were up, Sigalette would go right back down to the AHL, playing in two more seasons with the Providence Bruins, before leaving the play in Austria for the Vienna Capitals in 2009. Unfortunately, Sigalette's 43 seconds of fame cannot be found anywhere on YouTube, and his AHL career would also end on a tragic note, as in a game in 2007, Jordan would pass out on the ice due to multiple sclerosis. Nowadays, Jordan is a goalie coach for my favorite team, the Calgary Flames, and has been a part of the organization since 2014. This video was initially supposed to be something humorous, but instead, ended up becoming something extremely inspiring, as Sigalet showed that it doesn't matter what you may be diagnosed with, and that it shouldn't let you stop you from chasing your dreams. Jordan's determination and passion fueled him to keep fighting. He showed that if you truly want something, you can go and get it, even if that something lasts just 43 seconds. Jordan, you have MS, you know, it was one of the hardest things I've ever, ever had to hear in my life, and after that was, you know, you might not be able to play hockey again, and um, that was almost harder to hear than the diagnosis. I didn't really know much about the disease when I was diagnosed. Luckily for me, I caught the disease early and got on treatment early. Uh. But I knew in my heart and my mind I was going to do everything I can to, you know, continue on and play hockey. 